Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. So, we're on episode 5 of Jujutsu Kaisen, and you know, they do a really good job in the first three episodes of establishing that Yuji has really good control over Sakuna, and then what happens in this episode? The first training mission, they're on their own, and Yuji's gone MIA, and Sakuna's just let out to do whatever he wants. That's not scary at all. <laughs> um, I really love Yuji as a protagonist. And last episode, he got his first taste of just realizing how much in over his head he kind of is in this, which is terrifying. So it's, I'm like, bud, are you just like repressed in there because you just feel really bad? Because you, you probably need to come out and, and help because conveniently, the only one that's been left to kind of guard the facility is Fushigoro. And we've established that Sakuna is really okay with just getting rid of Fushigoro. So I'm like, ah. but um, yeah, so that's concerning to me. And Gojo's off on some mission. Nobara's out of commission. That one guy has taken her to the hospital. I'm assuming we're going to meet some maybe second and third years or a graduate this episode. I'm not sure. Um, the preview just kind of hinted at that. But they said that a student dies by the end of this event, and I'm assuming that's Yuji. But I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm really nervous, but I'm also really excited because Sakuna's dynamic is interesting to me, especially him and Yuji together. Um, so I'm curious. Last episode, Sakuna was kind of developing some Yuji-like mannerisms when he was facing, like, the curse womb curse demon. So I'm like, ah... I'm curious to see how that dynamic goes. And plus we have this idea of domain expansion and just really interesting stuff. So thank you all for watching with me. I hope y'all are excited for this episode because I am. So let's dive in and see what happens with Jujutsu Kaisen. And we're gonna start this episode here in five, four, three, two, one, let's go. Okay. Holy cow. There was so much that happened that episode. So much. So, there, there's there's a couple different things I want to talk about real quick. Ha. Oh. Um first of all, the elders super sketch because they set this whole thing up. I thought it was weird last episode that there was this special grade curse item, the one that Gojo had to show up and help with that seemingly was a was gonna be a problem but they just sent these three newbies to go take care of it i'm like that's suspicious but it all makes sense now that the elders and them sent them on assignment while gojo was away because gojo would have i was like i kept thinking gojo was going to show up and help out but he didn't even know that they were gone on assignment they just sent the middleman sent the messenger to go usher them to go do the job and he feels really bad for it now because it's gotten a student killed seemingly Oh, and Gojo being so mad, being like, I could just go kill them all right now. It's like, I honestly, I honestly believe he would have if that woman hadn't showed up. And she's interesting. Like, she seems like a coroner, um, like, going to do an autopsy on him. I wonder what he meant. I feel like if, if Yuji was really dead, Gojo wouldn't want her to just dissect his body. So I'm wondering if her cursed power has something to do with helping him. And making sure he's really dead or, or healing him or something or doing this reverse curse thing because that's what Fushigoro was wanting to do he wanted um, Sakuna to heal his heart so that he when Yuji switched with him he wouldn't instantly die man Fushigoro I wanted more on him and we got a little hint at backstory with him which is interesting he's clearly estranged from his dad um, he seems a little bit resentful of him from that flashback but this woman that he's tied to I'm interested to know if she's like a relation or if she's his old partner or how that all fits in because he seems to really care about her and is sad that she's gone. And man, him and Obara crying over Yuji, like, it didn't show them crying, but you're like, it's implied. It's like, man, that's hard. And then we have these second years. The panda? I don't even know. I, I'm so curious. And then how do they understand the guy that only speaks in recipe items? Is there a code? I'm assuming. Um, and then Zenin, who just looks, she, look, she looks like she's just going to have fun with Nobara because their personality seems similar, but also going to clash. Um, but yeah, the elders seem sketch, super paranoid. And so they try to get Yuji killed right off the bat. 
even though Gojo had set up this whole contract, speaking of contracts, he set up the contract where they would get all the fingers first and then kill him. Speaking of contracts, um, Sakura mentions a pact, which sounds very Faustian, very like, I'm going to make a deal with the devil sort of thing. So I'm wondering if in this inner inner world that Yuji's in right now, if he's going to confront Sakuna, they're going to have like an internal battle and Sakuna's going to win, or Yuji's going to win and make a contract with Sakuna and say, no, don't kill me yet. We're going to stick around and do this some more. So I'm curious what that's about. And then that ties to our, our Frankenstein looking samurai who is having this conversation with these curses, these very intelligent curses um, well, at least the one seems intelligent, which I'm assuming means that they're special grade or high level. And talking about how, um, how, what the curses want out of all this. And it sounds like they want to basically wipe out humanity and take over this part of the world and have it as their own dimension. Um, and that's so intriguing that humans are made of lies. Like, that's such a cool line because it's not, it's not untrue. It's not wrong. Humans do lie a lot. Um, and I like the idea of him saying that hatred is a pure emotion. Like, hatred is without falsehood. Because really, if you don't like something, you usually aren't making it up. You really don't like it. Um, whereas if you say you like something, sometimes you are lying about that. So, there's, so there's, that's an interesting thing. Obviously, there's some some issues with that philosophy. but But I think that's super interesting. And this guy, I'm wondering, is he just turning coats on the sorcerers and helping the curses because he's been jaded by the elders or someone in the past and he's getting revenge? Or is he a double agent and is he helping the curses but secretly helping the sorcerers? So I'm like, is he a double agent or is he a turncoat? Like, I'm trying to figure out with this guy. And we don't even know his name or anything about him. But yeah, that's super intriguing. And the idea that nobody around can see these curses at all. So that's interesting too. But man, oh... This episode, I think this might have sold me on this show because it's doing a lot of the shonen tropes of like the training arc, the tournament arc, um, but it's doing things in such a unique way, like introducing, having these characters have such emotional connections right off the bat. And like I said previously, Yuji and them are, Yuji and Fushigoro are such interesting protagonists, and Obara too, that I'm really curious their dynamics moving forward and how they interact with one another. And meeting the second years, the third years being suspended. That's interesting. I want more on that. But from the preview, it looks like we're going to get some inner monologue. I wanted that this episode. It looks like we've got to wait till episode six. But I wanted to see that inner dialogue between Sakuna and Yuji. And then I want to know more about this coroner woman. And it looks like she's talking with Gojo. So this was so good, y'all. This was a lot of fun. I, oh. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen next, which has me really excited. So I hope you all enjoyed that reaction too. Please feel free to comment down below. Please no spoilers. Um, I like going into these episodes blind, but otherwise I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll be back next week with more Jujutsu Kaisen. Bye.